Hi traders and welcome to the Technical Analysis Market Watch on Friday the 24th of March. So we saw a week of the volatility decreasing but still a lot of uncertainty in the markets and we've seen some very, very strong key levels really tested and rebounding back. So we'll jump straight into the markets and see if we can identify any trades for today or early into next week. So we'll start out here with the Aussie USD and you can see that we've obviously played the technical game quite nicely. We've found a, a good support level uh, down here at around that 60, uh, well 65 sort of uh, 80 area and then we had a good rebound up to the 20 moving average which is around that 67.20. Now as you can see in the last few candles we've had a couple of attempts to actually break this zone. It's hit the 50 moving average twice but has failed to actually get through and you can see that the daily has closed well below it. Now as you can see, the 20 moving average is effectively flatlining and running parallel with the resistance line. So it's effectively making a bit of a brick wall really right in front of where price needs to go. You got moving average, you got the 50 and the 200 not very far away. You got a resistance zone uh, that we know has been very strong. So yeah, in reality, the 6720 area is probably going to hold up a little bit longer. I wouldn't be interested in trading this one long until it actually broke through this level and was trading above that 68 cent mark, which is it has to be over the 50 moving average. Even then, you've got a little bit of resistance, but at least it needs to clear this very, very strong zone. You can see all of the price action through here. It's extraordinarily strong, and yeah, very, very important that it does actually break through that point. So if you're looking for a trade short, the best way to play this one is to look for a change of trend on a smaller time frame and see if you can basically get it back down to around that 65.80, which is the logical target for the short. So the long is very clearly defined here to close above that 67.80 to 68 cent mark. But on the short side, which is probably the more preferred um, option, seeing as though it's so heavy uh, resistance above, we can go to a one hour and you can look basically look for a movement down below these levels. You can see we've got pretty strong um, movement around that 66.80 area. If we get a daily close, or a one hour close, sorry, below these levels, we can start targeting that 100 points. We're absolutely scalping. While the market's uncertain, we're not looking for anything too dramatic. We're looking for a scalping opportunity. So we wanna see an hourly close at least below these levels here, and then we can look for a potential scalp down to that 65.80. So pretty good trading on the Aussie. All right, we'll go over to the US dollar CAD now. And as you can see, we'll take it back to a daily so we can look at the bigger picture first. And uh, as you can see, uh, very, very, very strong support on the 20 moving average. Look, I talk about it a lot. I've been you know, basically doing these for a very long time now. And you'll notice I say the same things and it's because they, they seem to work a lot. And, um, and you can see this is a very, very important role reversal zone. This is a daily chart again now. So you can see a lot of resistance right through these areas here. You know, countless candles that have been very, very strong there. And no real surprise that it hits the target and then comes back down and tests it from above. And no surprise to see a very strong resistance point, a support point at that point, which was previous resistance. So very similar to the Aussie, except in reverse, that the 20 moving average is effectively starting to flatline a little bit. It's holding price up uh, and actually bolstering the support level at around this 136.80 area. You can see we've had a couple of attempts to break it, but all of them have failed and it has certainly kicked up and pushed on. There's no reason to think that this support will break. In order for me to be even confident that I'll be looking for a short-term move down on the CAD, it would need to have a daily close below 136 um, completely. It needs to break this zone completely uh, with a daily close. Then we'd be looking at targeting that 135 area, which is the next very strong support level. But really the trades are on the way up here and you'd be looking for opportunities to pull back onto it, maybe a one hour time frame or a 15 minute and look to reach those highs again at around that 138 uh, level, 138.50. This is the zone for it. So effectively play the support and if we get a, a change of trend on a smaller time frame, start looking for long opportunities on the way up on that one. All right, US dollar yen now. And again, look, the levels have been holding up. I think this is probably the telling uh, time really for the volatile market that we've had all of the very important levels that we've been talking about, the markets have gravitated to. Yes, we've got news coming out everywhere. Yes, there's still a lot of uncertainty, but one thing we can always rely on is very, very strong levels. So this one is no exception. You can see here that we've got a very strong support zone. It has been strong in the past, and uh, you can see it's ho hovering around there. Look, we've got a very small uh, cross of the moving averages. The upside looks very hard. I mean, the 133 area, 133.50 has three moving averages all effectively crossing each other. So 
in order for it to break that, and it's a long way away, so I mean, if you were looking for a scalping opportunity, you could certainly uh, get one. Uh, if you see a series of higher highs and higher lows on a smaller time frame, uh, you could look for a move up to around that 133.50, but just be very, very mindful at that point there. There is a lot of resistance in front of it, and it's going to take a fair bit of breaking to get through. If we get a daily close below the uh, 130.50, I would be starting to look at the targets of around that 128. That's yeah, de definitely a potential uh, opportunity, but it price needs to do it first. I wouldn't be certainly jumping in and hoping that would happen. I'd wait for it to happen, and then we know we've got a pretty reasonable move down for about 200 points. But probably the easier trade would be a little move up to the moving averages. You're going to get maybe 100, 150 pips there, depending on where the entry point is. And I think that really opens you up for a good scalp. But again, it's one of those short-term ones where let the price do the um, talking. When that happens, trade it to the zones and you're not going to be too far wrong because the resistance is right there. Be very, very mindful of that. All right, on to the dollar index. So this has definitely been the talk of the town. The dollar index has been what everybody's talking about. Dollar strength, dollar weakness because of all the banking crisis, of course, um, and money flows in and out of the dollar very, very quickly. But look... You know, at the end of the day, all we're looking for is technicals and it hit the level that we were after. Uh, as you can see, the um, the support zone there that was right through here, we had basically three or four weeks of very strong support at this level uh, and it came down and effectively tagged it right on the uh, 101.50, as you can see. Now, wh where it goes to from here, of course, the euro is the story. So we've got to be very mindful that the euro is the one we're going to trade. But the dollar index gives us a very strong clue, seeing that are so closely um, related. And realistically, you know, whatever happens, we know whatever happens on the dollar is going to happen in reverse on the on the euro. We see very strong support here, um, so it's not going to be a little surprise to see the euro weakening off from a, a point of very strong resistance. Uh, this is starting to kick off now. Look, where, where this daily closes is very important. I, I'm mindful that we've got moving averages right at the point where we would be looking for a long. So if we are going to go long from here and we see a series of higher highs and higher lows on a smaller time frame, the uh, the 103. 30 to uh, probably 20 area by the time it gets there uh, is going to be the very, very strong resistance point. That's what I would be looking at the scalp. If I see a series of lower highs and lower lows on the euro, uh, that's what I'd be taking because this is obviously going to mean that it's going to get up to this level here. So keep an eye on that. We'll go to the euro. That's probably the one we're talking about. But this is the resistance level we're talking about. And the euro is going to have a corresponding support uh, level at around that same place. So you can see here, if the dollar index is going up, the euro is going to come down. We've already seen the weakness here at a, that 109 area. Very, It did reach a high of 109.20, as you know. The 20 marker that I always talk about is uh, well and truly alive here. But uh, you can see that it, it's starting to sell off. That, that candle is a pretty negative candle. You know, It's a shooting star, no question about that, at a point of resistance. Uh, it's Look, the 20 moving average and the 50 moving average are not very far away. That 107 area is beckoning. I think 108 um, is a pretty easy target to get to. It's only 20 pips away from that. That's going to be a sticking point for it. If it gets to the 108, uh, that's probably the time where it's either going to turn around and start moving up again, or it's going to break through the 108 and then start to push down. So that's the area I'd be um, really concerned about. If we get a close below the 108 on a daily chart, the, uh, the obvious target is going to be the 107 because that's where the trending moving average is in the shorter term. And it can do that very quickly. As you know, the market can move very, very quickly at the moment. So my preference would be for the short here because it makes more sense. I think that um, it's the easier trade because of the um, the problems that are in front of it. So if we get past the 108, a, close, a daily close below the 108 or even a four hour close, depending on the market that you're trading, um, then I'd be starting to look for targets at around the 20 moving average, which is around the 107. If we get a daily close above the 109.20, so I mean a, day, a proper daily close above this level here, uh, 110 is the next target and a very clear one at that because that's where the next resistance is. Um, and if we get a daily close above here, there's probably not a lot going to be stopping it from getting there. So you can certainly scalp it both ways, no question about that. But I prefer the short mainly because of where the uh, support is and also because of what the dollar index is doing. But there's a little bit of work for it to uh, you know, get that trade in. So just keep an eye on it and see where the daily closes. All right, and our last one is the US 500, of course. Look, the resistance has definitely held up on this one. We can see that we've got the moving averages all flatlining. It's very rare you see this uh, 20, uh, 50, and 200 effectively going horizontal. Okay, price has hit it. Uh, we've also got a trend line there. This is a valid trend line as well, right? Like we've got the series of lower highs and lower lows. This was a valid trend line effectively from uh, this point onwards, two touches at the top and a lower low. Uh, this one definitely validated it. So this line was absolutely uh, in play at this point. And you've got a resistance point, also a round number, and you've got a lower high, lower low sequence. You know you're in a downtrend. 
And you've also got the moving averages, all three of them stopping it from going any further. So it's got a lot of resistance in front of it. If it does manage to break through this level and gets and gets a close above 4040, it's a very, very bullish sign. Look, it's got problems straight away at 4080, but um, it needs to this is a lot of congestion. If we get a daily close above the 4050, I'd be satisfied that we might be seeing the um, the end of the weakness for a little time. I'm not convinced we're going any much any higher than here. Uh, this is probably the, the limit for it until we get a very good clarity of, of what's going to happen in the next month or two. Uh, once they really start to sort out their, their issues. But in my mind, uh, weakness is everywhere and resistance is everywhere. So I would be looking at shorting opportunities. And the first place I'd be looking for is the 3,800 because that's where it was most recently. And we are in a dead set downtrend. There's no question about that, right? We've got a series of lower highs and lower lows. We're at a resistance point, a very strong resistance point. I've given you five reasons why it's strong. Uh, so it's got a lot of work to do to break up. If it breaks up, absolutely different story altogether. Then we look at uh, trading it up to the 4080 and up into the yeah, 4180. But if we get um, any sign of um, movement, lower high, lower low sequences on a smaller time frame around this level, we'd be starting to target the 3800 again because it's a, a pretty reasonable trade. Keep your trades short in these in, in situations. Don't go looking for long-term trends. It's better to let the volatility play your game um, and that is actually getting in and out at good levels. But the levels are holding. They've been very, very good and very solid. So it's been a really good time uh, to actually trade a very, very volatile period. So I hope everyone's had a great week's trading. I think we've had some amazing opportunities. The uh, levels have all been great. So hopefully you've been able to take advantage of those. I hope you have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you all next week.